for years and years, they would just look at the heart and see that it was beating. That was it. And so we had to lay the foundation for how to approach imaging the heart. And nobody had done that before. It was, uh, it was all new territory. I wanted to be a professional baseball player. When I got to college, I played that year and I, and I realized I wasn't going to make it. It wasn't going to be in the cards. I then left on a, a, a mission for two and a half years to France and Switzerland and came back. So I walked in the pre-med committee and I said, I want to become a doctor. And they said, are you kidding me? You've taken nothing. You have no preparation, nothing in high school. You were a ball player. That's all that I need. If you tell me I can't do something, that's all I need to take and do it. So I persevered and that was my beginning of my career in medicine. I was involved in the kind of discovering uh, what the heart would look like in the fetus and, and drawing certain conclusions about what, what the anatomy looked like and how the pathology presented. And so we described the size of the heart, the tubes coming out of the heart, the aorta and the pulmonary artery, and we showed how you could measure those structures. So it just kind of was a progression. And you had the MO that showed you the rhythm, you had the 2D that showed you the structure, and then you had the color flow showing you how the the blood was moving in the chambers. And so combined those three modalities were the, were the initial backbone of fetal cardiology. Children are really special, they are not small adults. You get immediately a very strict and honest feedback. Children have an enormous capacity of recovery. So whatever you do to children has a lifelong impact. I was in the neonatal intensive care and we got a lot of children with heart disease and we had no real tool to examine the fetal heart. We had no ultrasound at that point of time. So it was not my primary goal to go into cardiology, but I saw there is an urgent need to do this. The very first intervention that was really exciting and, and something really very special. It was something absolutely new for us and it was new to the medical field everywhere. to him about sticking a needle into the fetus heart and perforating the valve and he looked at me and said you're absolutely crazy but actually it would make sense of course because that's probably the only thing that could save this baby so I was the GPS for him but he was the operator and now 20 years later we still have a very good functioning heart and I expect for this heart to carry on for many, many, many years. Only ultrasound was the tool that enables us to make the diagnosis, to follow these patients before birth, and to make the decision on how the well-being of the fetus really is. It's not only about structure, it's also about function. It's a volume data set versus simply a single slice. And the volume data set allows us to take and manipulate it to look at the heart from many different angles. We have a lot of different malformed hearts and sometimes it's really difficult to get the 3D reconstruction in your head and STICK helps you to get these 3D reconstructions. The beauty of Fetal HQ is that we can simultaneously, in less than four minutes, 
make several measurements that generate a report that analyzes the size, shape, and function of the ventricles of the heart. And this is so important because these changes occur long before the fetus deteriorates, and we see those types of changes that evolve. Finding the needle in the haystack is a difficult task because you see 997 fetuses that are normal to find the three that are not. That's not very many. Being a pediatrician and a, and a fetal cardiologist means that you have a strong impact on the further life. It's not only about changing things within a few minutes or within one year, it's about how these, these hearts really develop. This is something that motivates me 100 times to never give up, to always be on the edge, to always try to learn and also have respect for the responsibility that, that you really have. The unsung heroes are the engineers behind the scenes, those who spend their time making sure that what we use is as precise and perfect as possible. The people who develop the equipment and develop the concepts and make it happen, a great tribute has to go to them because they allow us to take and use the tools and, and shine. For all the sound, we, we had no idea what was going on inside the universe. With all the sound, the lights are on, and now with the kind of tools we have with GE, the lights are brighter, the lights are more exacting, we can see greater detail. It's a, it's a whole different world. 